Well, Joe Madden is celebrating his birthday in Clearwater, Florida, and here's why. It's the annual Thanksmas meal at the Homeless Empowerment Program in Clearwater. Homeless Empowerment Program, or HEP, uh, it serves the Tampa Bay area. They have a large facility offering emergency, transitional, permanent housing to the temporarily homeless, mentally disabled individuals, and more. Uh, you can see where you can help right there, HEPempowers.org, if you'd like to help out. Joe, we're going to talk about this a little more with Joe Madden, who joins us now in um, in an apron. He's been cooking down there. Joe, first, you got the apron on. Joe, happy birthday, first of all. Great to have you back on, and happy birthday to you. Good to see BK. 70 is the new 50, and don't you forget that. <laughs> nice. Oh, good. I'm going to news that soon. Um, before we get into that, we'll talk about what you're doing in Clearwater. Let's talk a little baseball first. At the top of the show, Joe, we were talking about the Dodgers. Give me your overall impressions. Again, it was a huge spending spree that they went on, specific on certain players, mostly from Japan, including a guy that played for you, Shohei Otani. Give me your overall thoughts on that incredible spending in the offseason. Andrew. You know, Andrew had that all uh, plotted out, I believe, well in advance. Uh, I think they did a great job with all of it, the way that uh, a lot of the, the money is being deferred, et cetera. Uh, but the, it's kind of a powerhouse, right? And on paper, you think there's no way this team can possibly lose. I mean, they're, they're the pictures of the players that they acquired. And you combine that with what they already have. I mean, that's the part about it that makes it so prodigious. Um, I still believe it's not just a, it's not a lock. I still like the Diamondbacks a lot, what they did last year, and there's going to be other ascenders at this point. But uh, that looked like an overarching plan that's been developed for over a period of time. Uh, my buddy Andrew uh, spearheads all of that. So, yeah, they're going to be tough to beat next year. It is. Um, I'm still trying to make sense of the contract, right, in that the enormous amount deferred. What did you think of that? Well, I, I, when I first heard about it, I thought it was Shoei's idea. I did. I mean, I, I didn't know that. I thought. He wants to be on a team that's going to win, correct? And so I want to go with the Dodgers. But I know if I, if they have to pay me this amount of money, then they're not going to afford, be able to afford the other uh, people necessary to help us win this year. Uh, again, I don't know this for a fact, but I thought that in the beginning. He wanted the Dodgers to be able to build around him. And if he got all that dough, it wasn't going to happen. So I think that was a big part of it. Um, you might get a chance to ask him that personally, but... That's what I think happened, and that's why they were able to build this group, this mega group around him, because of Shohei understanding exactly what was going on. Joe, you were the first guy to manage him in the States. Uh, Mike Social was first, but you, you did manage yeah. him in the States. Um, when he does come back to pitch, what's the best way to use him? Um, I, I would bet, um, as, it, as a starter, I, I wouldn't see it any other way. I mean, I've heard the, the relieving component. I would say as a starter, um, the part that's going to be difficult is fitting him in with a regular five-man rotation, which I think they're going to want to do. But you're going to have to uh, be very careful with that. I think it's going to be a slow process, and spring training is going to be very important to him also. But it's going to be as a starter. I would not mess with the bullpen. I would not mess with warming up and trying to figure out um, when the right time is to do that, how many pitches he should, uh, should be able to throw or not. Starting pitcher, build it in slowly. I, I know that they'll be able to figure something out to do that. And eventually, when they get to a number that's comfortable to everybody, they're just going to let them go for a bit. But there will be a cap. I'm dollars to donuts, there's going to be a cap on that first year back regarding number of pitches and or innings thrown. Right. What's the optimum? Like, again, we've seen, like, no matter how yeah. you slice it, it looks like he's doing 120, 130 innings. That's the way it's yeah. been working out. If you could design it like, hey, he's healthy, he's back, what's the best way to use him as a starter while he's hitting? Okay, I would not uh, – I would bet, again, uh, that – they might hold back the beginning of the year to keep those innings to the latter part of the season for the playoff potential. So you might see him again, just um, um, hit primarily in the beginning of that season, maybe his typical workouts in the bullpens and they'll figure out working the schedule backwards. Uh, and they'll go right to the last game of the world series back and then try to figure out, I would say hundred to 120 innings max would probably be the number, but they'll do that. And they'll, they'll try to utilize um, as much as they possibly can out of him on the mound. And I think it'll be a backward approach. Joe, what was Eric Neander doing? Like, what was his level when you were there managing with the Rays? It was, uh, it was wonderful. He'd walk in my office often and we would talk about things. I felt very comfortable and, and uh, confident that if he told me something, it was accurate and good and true and it was going to work. Uh, great personality, easy to, uh, to speak with, uh, not the kind of guy that thinks he knows everything at all. He's got a, a great way about him to lead, and he's going to listen. He's a great listener. So, But primarily, when he brought me something, I thought, okay, this is good stuff. 
And if I needed something, something I had in my mind, I would go to him and he would put it together and bring it back to me the next day in my office. I'm so happy for him. I'm, I'm, I, it, it makes sense that it's worked out this way for him. But he's as good as you think he is. He is mm. He's outstanding at his job. Yeah, Joe, it's, it's amazing that we're talking about this. You talked about Andrew Friedman, who's now running the Dodgers. He ran the Rays. Uh, Eric Neander has, has been with the Rays since 2007 as an intern. Uh, Kevin Cash now nine years since he replaced you when you went over to the Cubs. It's so much like stability and longevity. You were there, part of that Rays way. What's working there? Give it, I know you study that closely. What's working with the Tampa Bay Rays? I think they stay in-house really well. They promote from within. They have their own methods of doing things that are not influenced by outside groups. Um, they know what they're doing, and they get they are copied way more than they want to copy anybody else. It's all Rays. Um, I think that they got away from their DNA a bit uh, a couple years ago, and they wanted to be more offensive, and they got away from this, just the pitching and defense. We, we talked about pitching and defense all the time when I was first coming up there. And that's what got us to the, that World Series in 2008 and made us annual playoff contenders. Uh, that's a big part of it. They don't go over the top spending on one player. They can't afford to be wrong. And we always talked about that back then, too. We can't afford to give out a contract and, be, and have it come back and bite us because we can't do that. And they're not. And that's not what they do. They're very good. I think analytically, everybody talks about analytics, and you and I have spoken about it. But to me, the primary objective of analytics should be acquisitional. And I think they do a great job with that. They identify players before they become good. Even some veterans that have gone through some tough moments, they identify them, bring them over there, combining with their information and the, their bedside manner regarding uh, their pitching coach and their hitting coaches, et cetera, is outstanding. Mm. So they, they got all this going on. It's, it's their cocktail. They don't need to drink from anybody else's glass. Wow. Interesting. We can go on and on about that. Tell us about the thanks, Miss Meal, while you're cooking and what's happening tonight. Yeah, uh, the thanks, Miss Meal, is uh, um, old uh, the Italian and Polish roots, spaghetti meatballs, sausage, and some pierogi on the side. Um, yeah, this, I wanted to bring it back because, you know, COVID kind of put a damper on all that fundraising and having these kind of events. So it was a great place to come back here to the Homeless Empowerment Program and, and, uh, uh, take some batting practice here, kick it off, get it going again. Just want to mention this about this place specifically. Last year, 80% of the families and 82% of the vets exiting the program did not return to homelessness. Wow. That's powerful and impressive. Um, the program here, Kitchen and Dining Hall, serves more than 85,000 meals to residents annually. Um, think about it. Volunteerism, um, that's, a, that's a part of our country that I like to see more of us get involved in. And, and it's not done enough. This place exists and, and thrives because of the volunteers. And I met uh, a couple here. Of course, we have staff. They have staff here. But those that show, just show up uh, because they want to contribute really makes this thing work. So all this stuff is happening here. Uh, it was a great place, like I said, to reintroduce Thanksmas this year and get the Respect 90 organization going in our, our foundation. That's tremendous, Joe. Well, I'd say that again, because I know, especially with like increasing homelessness, you're, you, you said 85% of those who come in go out and don't come back. 87% of this was last year. 87% wow. of the families and 82. There's a lot of veterans here, and that's something that you have to understand too. Uh, the fact that we don't take better care of our events, our veterans, is really appalling. I don't understand uh, why we don't spend more time uh, developing programs just for that alone. But 87% of the families. 82% of the vets that were here last year exit, do not come back to homelessness. That's how good of a job they do here. Outstanding. Hey, Joe, happy birthday. Well done. We're going to put up the website again. It's hepempowers.org for people who want to find out more and that want to help. But you're there helping with an apron on your birthday. Uh, yeah, we, you do so many philanthropic things. Good for you, Joe. And we look forward to coming up as, as we get ready for spring training. Thank you. Have a great time tonight. Thanks, brother. Looking forward to it also. Thank you. All right. Happy birthday.